you don't just keep it to yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. And Jesus is the good news. Amen. There is no greater news than the news that we have Jesus. Because this good news of Jesus means that you are destined to die because of your sin. But someone has come and taken the penalty of your sin and is the one who was punished on your behalf and you get to walk away free. Praise the name of the Lord. That is the message of grace. That is the message of Jesus Christ. How do we get increase? We will get increase by not keeping quiet. The church of today, the reason why we are not expanding, the reason why we are not increasing, the Bible says the church was added daily. In the days of the apostles, the church was added daily because the person who received Christ today went and came back with three or five people. They had the gospel, they received Jesus, the five go and bring their five. Praise the name of the Lord. And the increase continued. If we want to see increase in this kingdom, it is high time we stop keeping quiet with the good news of Jesus Christ. And there's a time I have challenged myself. Have I told people about Jesus? Have I, told, have I introduced people to Jesus as much as I should introduce people to Jesus? I just want you to ask yourself that question. Are there people you spend the whole day you work with, but you have never introduced Jesus to them. You see, when you go to a party or when you go somewhere and you have a companion, you are very quick to introduce your plus one. Amen? Now you say, my, uh, you, you introduce and say, and this is, like yesterday we went for a party with my daughter. And I, I was there saying hi to all these people who know me, but they don't know her. So what do I do? And this is my daughter, patience. Meet my daughter. I introduce her. I introduced her to those people. Praise the name of the Lord. It is the same way because we have Jesus in us. Amen. And wherever we are, He is with us. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Us because we have Jesus with us all the time. Why do we leave him out? Praise the name of the Lord. When we introduce ourselves to people, why do we leave Jesus out? Why not tell them, and I have Jesus? My name is Lucy, and I have Jesus. You just start a conversation. If somebody has never heard about Jesus, they're like, and who is Jesus? And then you can start sharing and telling them who is Jesus. Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to start practicing that. We need to start living that. Introducing Jesus to the people we meet day by day. Praise the name of the Lord. Can I have another mic? I think this one is out. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. This is better. Amen. Hallelujah. Introduce Jesus. Don't leave him out of your life. You know, the Bible says that if you abide in me and I abide in you and we abide in the Father. And I want to give you an, an, an example or an, an analogy that you're going to get so that every place you go now, make it your habit to introduce Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you settle down, please? Amen. Because I want you also to know this. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we we usually make tea. Uh, in, yeah, everybody makes tea, whether you are Kenyan or American tea. We make tea, yeah? And uh, the way we make tea, we have water and we have milk. And when we mix the water and the milk, is there a way you can separate the water from the milk? No. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want you to just think about that when we say that Jesus is in me and I in him, I want to think about I want you to think about milk and water. When they mix, there is no telling which is water, there is no telling which is milk. They are all mixed. Amen. And I want to do I want to go an extra mile. Now you have your milk, you have your water, they are all mixed up, and then 
you boil it and then you put it in a hot thermos. You know the, the flask yeah. that we put? You put it in a hot thermos and you seal it. So I want you to imagine you and Jesus in the Father. The Father as the, as the thermos, the hot thermos. So let me ask you a question. If you take that thermos and you leave it out there and it rains on the thermos, will the temperature in the thermos change just because it's raining outside? No. Will it become cold because the thermos was rained on? I want you to think about that. You with Jesus in the Father. The circumstances that are out there are not supposed to change your relationship with the God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Just because you are in a place where you don't go professing your faith, it doesn't mean it should change your faith or the way you practice your faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us share Jesus with the people we meet every day. I told you last time as we were, we were, we were, we started this topic about the name of Jesus and who Jesus is. That when I came here, I realized that people greet you and they tell you their name. I didn't know why they are doing that. It took me by surprise when the first time I came to the U.S., we went to a party and somebody was like, oh, hi, Mike. Say hi, and they suppose because they expect you to respond, you also introduce your, yourself. yourself. And in that introduction, when you are introducing yourself, that is the first place where we should introduce Jesus. Amen. And I want you to practice this this week. When you go to work or when you meet somebody new, just practice telling them uh, your name and you have Jesus. And start that conversation there. Let's have this conversation. Let's tell people the good news. Because the good news is Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, do you promise to do that? Okay. Amen. Are you afraid? <laughs> we cast away every fear. <laughs> Every fear that has hindered us from introducing Jesus to the world, we cast it away. And as we, we, we make that declaration, I have Jesus. You know, when you have Jesus, I don't know why I'm going this line because that is not where our topic is. But let me just say this because the Spirit of the Lord is leading me to say this. When you have Jesus, the Bible says, behold, the old is gone. Behold, you are a new creature. When you have Jesus... And we declare that he is Lord. Who is a Lord? A Lord is one who has authority over you. Praise the name of the Lord. So when you have Jesus and you declare, I have Jesus. He is the Lord of my life. It means the one who controls you is Jesus. Your body, your spirit, your soul, your will, your desire. Everything that is within you is subjected to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And when everything is subjected to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, it means that when we see you, we see Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. This is getting tough. Just say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When we see you, we see Jesus. Jesus. When you get in a situation or in a conflict, just because you told us you have Jesus, we are watching to see what would Jesus do. Not what would you do. Not what Lucy would do. Because we are under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Am I communicating? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. And the reason why many of us don't want to introduce Jesus it is because when we see you, we see you, we don't see Jesus. Yes, you have Jesus, but his lordship is not evident in your life. And so today, as I engage you into this commitment of introducing Jesus to the world, I want you to be asking yourself this question. What would Jesus do? W-W-J-D. Amen? 
what would Jesus do? In every situation, from morning to evening, I want you to ask this question all the time. When somebody cuts you on the road, in the highway, what would Jesus do? Before you throw that those hands, before you 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 curse, before you get angry, you ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Those people who you are working with, and some of them are mean to you, before you react to their meanness, ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Praise the name of the Lord. And when you ask yourself that, it gives you a moment of reflection and a moment of understanding. Whatever I am going to do is not what I would do. Because if it was me, <laughs> if it was me, huh, with myself, with the hum humanity I have, with the dignity I feel I have, if it was me, they would know me. But because Jesus is the Lord over my life, it is not about me. It is about him. And because I want him to be known to the people around me, I am going to ask myself this question day in, day out. What would Jesus do? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When you find situation that makes your anger rise, before you react with the anger, ask yourself, What would Jesus do? Before you get frustrated and you start complaining, ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Before you have fun and go overboard, ask yourself, what would Jesus do? You know, so even good things, in good times, sometimes we do not represent Jesus. Even in good times. You get so excited, you start to party before knowing you've, you become drunk with the people. You forgot that you're representing Jesus. Before you go overboard, ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Because we are the ones representing Jesus to the world. We are the one making Jesus known. And, you, and when you ask yourself that question, I want you to have time. This in your prayer times, in your quiet times, I want you to have time to study the gospel. Study about how Jesus walked on this earth and what he did. Praise the name of the Lord. When he faced any type of encounter, what did he do? So that you may get the answer. Amen. Amen. When people criticize you, when they talk about you, what would Jesus do? When they betray you, when they spit on you, when they divide up your staff, what would Jesus do? do? Praise the name of the Lord. When you do good to them and they repay you with evil. <laughs> That's a tough stuff, yeah? yeah? When you do good and instead of remembering the good you did to them, they repay you with evil. Ask yourself. What Jesus before you beat your chest and say, I will not help anybody else. I'm done with helping people. Before you do that, ask yourself. What would Jesus do? Because we have, it is the high time we bring this good news. It is the high time we start sharing. The Bible says from our text, uh, Isaiah 9, we are still in Isaiah. Isaiah 9 and verse 6, we are still there. Uh, last week we talked about wonderful counselor and mighty God. Uh, today I was planning on speaking about the remaining two names. But uh, that came by the leading of the Spirit of God. And I believe that's what we needed to hear. Amen. So let's turn to our Bibles in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. I'm going to read again. Are we there? Um, I'll be there yet. Amen. I, 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 okay. Can you go to the to the beginning of the Bible and check the? It's called the appendix. Yeah. The appendix. 
at the beginning of the Bible, there is an appendix there that tells you uh, the book you're looking for, and it tells you the, the, the page number. Amen? You get there, you get there. I believe each and every person by the, as we continue to grow, we'll be able to, to flip these Bibles in <laughs> and get there. Amen. And we are doing good. Thank you, everybody who has come up with the Bible. Amen. We say we want to flip the pages. We don't want to just study the, the mobile phone, huh? the mobile Bible, because you're going to go to Isaiah and then our WhatsApp chat shows up. <laughs> and then somebody has liked your Facebook status and before you know it you are not listening you are already reading your messages and emails so it's good that we keep the we keep this going god bless you god bless you everybody who has the bible amen uh chapter 9 and verse 6 the bible says for unto us a child is born and to us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And I'm going to read verse 7 today. Of the increase of his government and peace shall there be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Praise the name of the Lord. Last week we understood the names and we said his name is Wonderful Counselor. And we talked about what is counsel. We said counsel is a perfect wisdom that enables the king to make the right decision in leading the people. It refers to the perfect understanding of the will of God, knowing exactly what is right and what God's purposes are. Praise the name of the Lord. And we say that Jesus is a wonderful counselor. He He leads us. He guides us. We need to just listen to him. Amen. We need to develop the art of listening to his counsel so that we may walk in the will of God and we may know what is what is the purposes of God in the in our decision making when we are we, we in our wills in in our actions that we are led and given counsel by this wonderful counselor. Amen. We also talked about mighty God and we said mighty literally means gibbo, which means hero. And a hero is a doer of great things, of mighty acts done for someone else that they could not do for themselves. And we say that Jesus is a mighty hero. He is great. He's a mighty God in our lives. He does things for us that we cannot be able to do on our own. Praise the name of the Lord. Because our power is limited and so today i want us to speak about everlasting father that's where we are number three everlasting father everlasting means forever it means with no end and with no beginning amen, amen. everlasting means with no end it means with no end with no amen. beginning it is forever he is an everlasting father. From the beginning he was. Amen. From the beginning he was. The Bible says in John chapter 1 that in the beginning there was a word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh. Now this is Jesus Christ. He was in the beginning. He was from the beginning. And he has no end. The earth and the heavens shall come to an end. They shall pass away. We have a beginning. We have the birth date and we have a death date. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's why we write in the memorial sunrise and sunset. Because we have a time limit. But Jesus has no time limit. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He has no end. Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah 57 verse 15 says, I want to read that for you to explain more about everlasting father. Uh, just the same book we were in, go down a few chapters. 57 verse 15. For that says the high and the lofty one that inhabited in eternity, whose name is holy. 
I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and a humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Praise the name of the Lord. The, the word that is used there, it means he lives forever. Praise the name of the Lord. And so this, this verse literally means that he lives in the forever. He inhabits eternity. Praise the name of the Lord. Did I lose you? He inhabits eternity. He lives forever. He is not caught up or restricted by time as we are. Hallelujah. Therefore, he does not change. He does not get older or slower or flail. Or nor does he need to mature up or grow to learn. He is the way he is forever. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why I, I always say this. That everybody calls him father. We all call God father. Have you heard somebody saying God is, your, is their grandfather? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to understand he does not get old. He does not get frail. He, he does not need time to mature. He does not need to learn. He is forever. He in, he inhabits the eternity. He is there by virtue. He is God by virtue. I want you to understand that it is only the Holy Spirit that can help you understand this concept that he lives forever. Praise the name of the Lord. We are restricted by time. We are restricted by age, but that does not apply to him. He lives forever. He is the everlasting Father. Praise the name of the Lord. Think about that. About Jesus being the everlasting father. And now I want you to think about father. He is forever. He inhabits eternity. Now think about the word or the name father. Who is a father? A good father has compassion. Praise the name of the Lord. A good father is loving. A good father cares. A good father offers protection. A good father offers guidance. A good father offers support. A good father offers encouragement. And throughout the Bible, the Lord is referred to as Father. And so I want you to understand that we have a Father. I don't know who your ugly father is or how he treated you or how he nurtured you. But I know that we have people who have no father. They were raised by single mothers. Amen. I know there are people who may have lost their fathers at a tender age. Amen. And I also understand that we are living in an era where some fathers cannot be called good fathers. And because of that, if you come from such a scenario, it gets harder to relate to a father in heaven. If your father was harsh, if your father abused you, if your father neglected you, it becomes hard for you to relate with God as the father. But I have come to tell you that our father in heaven is a good God. He is a good father. He is full of compassion. He is full of love. He is full of guidance. He is full of protection. He protects us. He loves us. He calls us by our names. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Psalms 103 verse 13. We are not going to read. Just write it down. He has compassion on those who fear him. Isaiah 63 verse 16. It says, you, O oh Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer from old is your name. So I want you to know that these are the names that were, be, were given to Jesus. And we said last Sunday that these names are more functional. It's not that you start saying, you, instead of calling him Jesus, you say, now I'm not going to be saying Jesus, I'll be calling him Everlasting Father, Everlasting Father. No, these are functional names. He is Everlasting he inhabits eternity, but he is a good father. Amen. He is a good father. And the other name is the Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. 
Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Who doesn't love peace? We love peace. And we strive to seek for peace. But guess what? Jesus is a Prince of Peace. When this prophecy was being prophesied, it was a time when the children of Israel were under oppression. They were under captivity. They were facing war all the time. So when the Lord spoke through Isaiah and said, and his name shall be a prince of peace, it was such an, an exciting promise that they are going to attain peace. Praise the name of the Lord. He is the prince of peace. And he's the prince of peace because his kingdom is the kingdom of peace. Just like we started by asking, what would Jesus do? Remember when they came to betray him and Peter was there ready to just protect him and he took off his sword and cut off somebody's ear? Guess what Jesus did? He took the ear and put it back. His kingdom is a kingdom of Peace. Come on, say with me. His kingdom is a kingdom of peace. His kingdom, is a kingdom of peace. His kingdom is not established in war or in fighting. During those eras, and even in these days, we have heard. Amen. If you if you if you are if you did hear the, the war with Osama, there is now war with the ISIS. Praise the name of the Lord. The, 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 their kingdoms. That you have to fight and overthrow them to take over. But with Jesus, his kingdom is not about war. His kingdom is not about fighting. It is a kingdom of peace. It is not maintained by war. It is maintained by peace. Praise the name of the Lord. And you, you find this in John chapter 18, verse 36. Jesus making this declaration to Pilate and saying, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were my servant, would fight to prevent my arrest. But my kingdom is from another place. Amen. It is about peace. It is about peace. And this peace is so great that once we receive Jesus, he makes us to be with peace, at peace with God. Amen. When you are in sin, you are not at peace with God. But once you receive Jesus, we receive reconciliation to the Father. You are adopted now. You belong to this everlasting Father and you are at peace with God. And guess what the Bible says? That when the ways of a man pleases God, even his enemies make peace with him. You know, when your ways pleases God, now that you belong to this kingdom, now that you are a son of God, your enemies have no choice but to make peace with you. Because they're no longer fighting with you. They're fighting with your father. You now have a defender. You now have divine protection. And that is why when you receive Jesus, you are a carrier of peace. Wherever you go, you are supposed to bring peace. And you remember when we were learning about the armor of God, we said on our, on our feet, we put on shoes of peace. You go somewhere and there is dispute because you have Jesus, you bring in peace. He is the prince of peace. And I wrote in my book, Times of, Times of Refreshing, about the element of peace. And I say that this peace is a peace that cannot be understood by human understanding. That's what the Bible says. And this peace is not just peace with God, but also peace with your past. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you receive Jesus, the Prince of Peace, you are able to make peace with your past. You know, there are people who are not at peace with their past. Things that happened in their past. They are still having struggles with their past. They are still living in their past. They are still crying over what, uh, what happened in the past. Praise the name of the Lord. They are still stuck in the past. But when you have this prince of peace, you make peace even with your past. You may say, my past may not be good. 
I may have walked through shame. I may be have, have been disgraced. But I make peace with my past. My past will not dictate my present. My past will not dictate my future. I have the Prince of Peace. I am at peace with my past. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And you also have peace with the present. There are people who do not have peace with the present. They are always worried. They cannot live in the moment. <laughs> they cannot even enjoy this time. The way we are just seated here in the presence of the Lord. You find those people, they cannot settle. They do not have peace. You are in church, but you are like, oh, you are thinking miles and miles away. You cannot enjoy the present. But when you have this prince of peace, you have peace with the present. You're saying, I am here now according to the will of God. And everything happens together for good to those who love the Lord. So I am at peace with what is happening right now. Because I have Jesus. He is the Prince of Peace. You know, even in the presence when this try to go wrong, you are calm. You are at peace. Because you know you are not in control, but he is in control. And who is he? He is the Prince of he is the prince of peace. And then when you have Jesus, the prince of peace, you also have peace with the future. You have peace with tomorrow. You are not worried about tomorrow because you know who holds tomorrow. You may not know what tomorrow holds, but you are very much in connection. You know someone who holds tomorrow. You may not have what you need now. You may not have what you need next year. But instead of worrying about next year, when you have the Prince of Peace, you are at peace with the future. You can make a declaration and say, I don't know what tomorrow will bring, but you know what? I'm not going to face tomorrow alone. I have the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Praise the name of the Lord. My time is up. But you know what? I want you to know that you have Jesus. Jesus amen. amen. I have Jesus. Amen. After you share your name, the next statement should be, I have, I have Jesus. Let it become a conversation. Oh, who is Jesus? And then you can tell the people, he is a wonderful counselor. Amen. amen. He is a mighty God. Amen. He is an everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. I've given you four names. Within these two Sundays, that you can be able to introduce Jesus to your colleagues. You can introduce Jesus to the people you meet. You can introduce Jesus to your family members. I know there are people here with their families that do not know Jesus. Let us make Jesus known. Just like the first church, they made Jesus known. And that is why we know him today. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to stand before the Lord. Uh, as we make this prayer, as we make a prayer of thanksgiving, I want us to thank the Lord for we have Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Let me hear you sing that song. Declare your love for Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Let's sing with Swahili. It's the same words, so how we love Jesus. But in Swahili, it goes like this. Yesunakupenda. Yes. Sunaku penda, yeah. Sunaku penda, kwani ulini 
And I, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, Jesus. because you Jesus thank you for loving us thank you Lord God for you loved us that you gave us your only begotten son thank you Jesus for you gave your life on our behalf and today we thank you for we have known you you are a wonderful counselor you are the mighty God you are the everlasting father you are the prince of peace in our lives oh God and we pray in the name of Jesus that from today, we will make you known. We will share this good news. We will share you with others. We will talk about you. We will tell people of who you are in our lives, oh God. We rise up against every fear. That may have hindered many of us from sharing you with others. We declare in the name of Jesus that God you have not given unto us a spirit of fear. But you have given unto us a spirit of power. The spirit of love and of sound mind. And with the spirit of power and boldness we shall declare you and make you known to others in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you Lord because you are Lord over our lives lives. May you continue being Lord of our lives. We surrender to you, Lord. Behold, we declare the old is gone and behold the new. We are a new creature. We shall walk under your Lordship in the name of Jesus. Before we take action, before we speak, before we do anything, oh Lord, help us to ponder and ask ourselves what would Jesus do? And we are givers an answer, Lord, as we continue to walk intimately and hand in hand with you in this new relationship. We thank you, Lord, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. 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 I want you to walk around, say hi to two, three people, and just remind them to ask themselves which question? What, what will Jesus do? Come on, just remind them to ask which question? What will Jesus, what will Jesus do? Do amen, amen. As we prepare to give our offerings.